All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Nick and Matt. We are back again for the C two a days. It is August first. Is the second episode of today. Hope you guys were able to catch out the morning one. Nick will be back with you tomorrow morning, and then possibly both of us back again with you guys tomorrow night. But I mean, we thought this might be a fairly easy episode here tonight, <laughs> and then uh, Hunter Deckers and Iowa State changed all that. So give us the update on that and everything going on with with this betting stuff. Yeah. So as we were all involved in a draft uh, late this this afternoon, early evening. Uh, a report came down. We'd heard whispers. We've seen rumors. We, we knew that Hunter Decker's name was connected to this, but officially a, a media report, uh, Travis Hines of the Des Moines Register has reported that quarterback Hunter Deckers is, quote, accused of placing wagers on Iowa State sports, including a 2021 football game. Uh, according to the story, Deckers faces a uh, p- potentially faces a permanent loss of eligibility under the NCAA rules uh, that prevent athletes from betting on their own games and uh, the games involving their school and other sports. So uh, Deckers was officially charged, it sounds like, with tampering with records related to this. I also saw a later uh, report that apparently his parents are involved, which is you know, just doesn't feel great. Um, but at this point, it, it seems pretty unlikely uh, that he's going to play for the Cyclones this season. And one, he might not play college football again. Two, yeah. uh, he maybe, probably not going to be the only Iowa State player um, that is impacted in, in this type of uh, fashion. Yeah, I mean, the reports are there's at least or possibly four players on Iowa State, at least, that are involved in this. Obviously, it's not a great look for for Hunter Deckers. I, I would be surprised if we if we see him play another snap of football again. And for, well, I guess he could technically go on to the NFL. I, I don't know that he's shown enough personally on the college level to make that happen, but definitely sounds like his college career is over, uh, which honestly leaves Iowa state in a really bad place as well. You know, we talked a lot in, in the episode this morning about everything you do when it comes to returning production, offensive line, um, everything college. I mean, all kinds of stats, any college football fan would want. And I know you just dropped in our discord kind of updating that now, because it looks like probably true freshman JJ Cole is going to be the starter at Iowa, Iowa state. I mean, realistically, what, just from the Hunter Decker's perspective, because he's the only real name that we have connected to this. Mm -hmm. How does this affect this Iowa State offense? Well, so I, in in my update, I've I've got uh, Rocco Becht uh, ahead of uh, Cole just just right now. And that's, you know, we could certainly learn more. Um, I'm I'm willing to be convinced that that Cole's the guy, or especially if we hear any sort of confirmation on that. But um, made that switch in our projected depth charts in our team profiles um, that actually knocked Iowa state down losing Hunter Deckers who in our individual player ratings is a, uh, like an 86. So, you know, better than FBS average, yeah. got a full year of uh, starting experience, pretty big loss, pretty big downgrade, uh, whether you're going to a true freshman or retro freshman, uh, if, if Beck ends up being the guy. So um, Iowa state dropped a uh, half a dozen spots or so in our, FBS power ratings. Um, they're still in the the same, you know, number 13 spot in our big 12 pecking order. So it doesn't really impact their outlook and conference play, but the margin of error just got a lot tighter. I, I did mention, I don't know if anybody uh, caught my appearance on the Mac preview of the burning the red shirt podcast, but Andrew asked me, you know, could, could Ohio beat Iowa State. He made a point of, of asking that specific question. And I kind of hemmed and hawed and thought, well, you know, it's only about a field goal projected uh, point spread right now in our numbers. But right now it's dead even. Iowa State with only Hunter Deckers uh, impacted right now because I do want to wait until we get, you know, that sort of official media report, if not any, you know, official suspension. Um, it's uh, Iowa State by a uh, is now favored by 0. 0.02 points, so uh, a literal coin flip. Coin flip. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see what other names obviously come out again. The, the room, if you want to look up the rumors, we don't want to. I don't want to say because I don't want to be wrong on any names. But if you want to look up the rumors of of the other players and position players that may be involved in this, it's it's obviously not a a great look for for Hunter Deckers or Iowa State currently with with everything going on. 
Uh, the news we thought we were going to probably be leading off with today was was Wake Forest with a potentially devastating blow to the Wake Forest wide receiver core with Les Johnson of the Demon Deacons Digest reporting that Donovan Green went down with a non-contact injury uh, late in practice on Monday. He did not practice today. Uh, according to Johns, Green is being evaluated by doctors over in about the next 48 hours and will know more in the coming days. Johns also reported that the starting wide receiver group in team period on Tuesday's practice was Jamal Banks, uh, Taylor Morin, and Walker Merrill. Others that could benefit in terms of playing time are Keyshawn Williams and Wesley Grimes. But obviously a, a big blow to the, the Demon Deacons wide receiver group. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I mean, most most folks consider Jamal Banks uh, the top wide receiver option there. Uh, but we've seen some big things from Donovan Green in the past. And, you know, last year he was able to come back and, and perform pretty well after an ACL injury that cost him the 2021 season. Um, so, you know, you hate to see this type of thing for him personally, hate to see it obviously uh, for Wake Forest and, and um, the fact that he could potentially, and this is speculative still, but it was a, it was, was reported as a non-contact injury. That's, that's not, you know, a word that, that we like to see. Um, so would really hate it if it is uh, officially going to be a, a, a significant injury. Um, but that does, you know, thinking about it in pure, pure football terms or in fantasy terms, uh, Banks, I think, probably gets a little bit of a boost, um, solidifies himself as that, you know, number one guy. Taylor Morin is uh, solid, not necessarily spectacular. And then, there's there's some discussion as to who else um, could be valuable in uh, this offense. I know there are folks on our uh, CFF team at C2C who are really high on Wesley Grimes. Uh, Walker Merrill, as you mentioned, was uh, getting those reps at least in one period that, that John's reported uh, with the starters. Also heard some good uh, buzz about him in the spring. I believe Grimes had a big spring as well. Uh, but Keyshawn Williams is um, the most experienced of that group, at least got the most playing time last year. And trying to read more reports from John specifically and other Wake Forest folks, uh, Williams is mixing in quite a bit with the, the starting group okay. as well. So um, we'll see how it shakes out. Hopefully, you know, we get some good news on green and it's not anything uh, significant, but if it is um, there are, there are some options there and, and that offense specifically has uh, provided valuable, you know, value for multiple receivers in the past. Yeah. I mean, when you hear non-contact injury, you, you fear the worst, uh, you know, maybe we can point to hopefully just recently Joe Burrow had a non-contact injury and it ends up just being a calf strain. Hopefully that's what we're looking at from Donovan green, who, you know, unfortunately was a, a very high name or a name that we all knew a couple of years ago and really hasn't been able to, to reproduce that, uh, that success. Yeah. Uh, at Texas, uh, kind of on the flip side, some good news about a wide receiver who uh, we didn't see last year. Isaiah Nair missed the 2022 season with a torn ACL after transferring from Wyoming. According to head coach Steve Sarkeesian and his media appearance today, Nair is uh, fully cleared and ready to go. And in fact, Sarkeesian said that every other player on the team will be available when camp begins Wednesday. Uh, so that's good news. Not a lot of teams in the country probably have their full complement, even on day one of fall camp. Um, but then we also got a, a little nugget that uh, is of interest. Obviously, nothing decided at this point, but uh, offensive coordinator and offensive line coach Kyle Flood mentioned in his turn with the media that Jonathan Brooks is going to be uh, the first running back up in drills to open camp. I mean, that's massive. We, we've talked a lot here at C2C over the past couple of months that Steve Sarkeesian has had a 1,000-yard running back everywhere he went. There's been a little uh, internal debate here on who that's going to be, whether it is Jonathan Brooks, Jadon Blue, or Cedric Baxter. Sounds like at least right now, Brooks is going to get those first team reps actually in that draft. You were just talking about the beginning of the show. He went later than uh, Cedric Baxter much later. So it'll be intriguing to see what happens with Brooks Baxter, obviously the very highly valued five-star freshman that they got in, in this recent recruiting class. 
Uh, Arizona. So like Texas, Arizona will have all players available at the start of the camp. That includes left tackle Jordan Morgan, who suffered a torn ACL toward the end of the 2022 season, which is good news for Jaden Rashada and the rest of the Wildcats offense. Oh, I think you mean Jaden Delora. I'm sorry. Yeah, Jaden Delora. <laughs> that, is, that is correct. Uh, I have uh, – go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say there, there might be some folks in, in uh, the great state of Arizona – who, uh, yes, uh, I, yeah. I, I do apologize. So <laughs> look, Arizona fans, I'll, I'll redeem myself a little bit. I love just on the recruiting note, they just landed Damon Williams yesterday. Uh, highly valued four star mm. quarterback, uh, was at the Elite 11. I love this kid, electric arm, great rusher. So that was probably where my mind was thinking was recruiting, <laughs> and that's why I said Rashad. I love Damon Williams, is a great pickup. I mean, they are killing it in recruiting this year. I'm excited to see what Arizona is able to do this year and moving forward. Absolutely. Really, really impressive uh, last you know couple of years now and, and starting to pay off on the field. Great news with Morgan being back. I know there are a lot of folks uh, high on him in uh, you know, NFL draft circles. He certainly graded out really, really well last year and uh, being able to, to protect Delora, help clear the way for guys like Michael Wiley and, and uh, give Delora a little more time to work with Jacob Cowing and then the rest of that talented wide receiver crew. Uh, good, good news. Uh, for Oklahoma, also uh, had some injury updates. There were a handful of players that uh, will be banged up uh, as the Sooners enter camp. But apparently, according to George Stoya of Sooner Scoop, uh, running backs coach DeMarco Murray says that Javante Barnes is ready to go. Uh, he did have a foot surgery in the spring. There were some pictures of him, uh, you know, on a cart with the kind of look like he was with the, uh, uh, what is that? The Achilles injury that I know that's not what it was, but yeah, it was it, a dead, gave uh, that kind of look. Yeah. Dead, he had, it was on the, had the cat or the soft cast on his foot was on like the little scooter and yeah, it was dead bone in his foot, which is bad news for my guy, Gavin Sawchuk. Love Gavin Sawchuk. I was really hoping he was going to get to get to start off the season as the guy, but it is good news for all the Barnes fans and obviously Oklahoma fans as well. Definitely. Uh, for Tulsa, after missing last season, running back Anthony Watkins is back for the Golden Hurricanes. According to Caden McFarland of KGHR TV in Tulsa, Watkins is seemingly healthy, eligible, and at the head of the line during drills. Good news. I know I've seen multiple places that uh, Watkins is projected as the starter there and, and really weird. Uh, you know, he, he didn't have the, the highest expectations coming into last year, but folks thought that he might be able, uh, you know, it, it, to, to be a presence in that running back room. And then uh, he just never, never played. So it sounds like maybe there was an eligibility issue, maybe uh, some health with that as well. Um, but, but good to see him back and, and, uh, you know, potentially somebody we need to pay attention to if he's going to be uh, at the top of that depth chart. At Marshall, head coach Charles Huff stated Tuesday, I'll go ahead and address it. If we play today, Cam Fancher is our starting quarterback. So uh, Fancher picked up a lot of starting experience as a freshman in 2022, but uh, the Thundering Herd brought in former Rice starter and uh, I believe super senior or at least uh, redshirt senior TJ McMahon. So an experienced quarterback into the room, but at least as camp opens, uh, Fancher is, is going to be the top guy on the depth chart and, and the player to be to that position. San Jose State, following up on an earlier note on Justin Lockhart, the Spartans' likely top target returned from illness for, for or from illness to practice for the first time Tuesday. Probably not surprising. Shevin Cordero reportedly had his best practice yet. Good news, and I also saw uh, Nick Nash, converted quarterback, continues to make some plays. So uh, something maybe to be aware of there. A couple of transfer portal notes. Uh, we may, as camps open, see some things here and there as, as uh, you know, the pecking order gets determined and as, uh, you know, sometimes eligibility issues pop up right here as, as uh, the fall semester gets ready to start. But um, one way or another, Oregon State running back Jam Griffin uh, has entered the transfer portal, we learned on Tuesday. Griffin ran for 488 yards and four touchdowns last year for the Beavs. Uh, his departure could, if we're thinking of it as a uh, fantasy impact, could benefit Damian Martinez and Deshaun Fenwick in terms of uh, that pair earning more carries in 2023. So certainly a shot to the depth uh, for Oregon State, but uh, that 
you know, that group, uh, the workload was split kind of among those three at, at large chunks of last season. So if you're high on Damian Martinez, I know my personal fantasy rankings are, are quite high on Martinez. Uh, this isn't in the worst news for us. Uh, and then one other offensive line note, uh, Kiyunta Goodwin, who was a really highly rated former Kentucky signee, had transferred to Florida, uh, expected to compete for a starting spot with the Gators this year. He also entered the portal on Tuesday. So Florida, a um, little bit, uh, you know, lack of depth on the offensive line already. There have been a, you know, some questions as to whether or not uh, at least one other incoming transfer that they were expecting to start or compete for a starting spot may or may not uh, make it to fall and, and might transfer elsewhere. So uh, we got confirmation that Goodwin uh, will be leaving Gainesville. Yeah, not not a not a good look for a Florida team that at least I don't expect to have a a very good year. So you and you definitely don't want to be losing your offensive linemen. Uh, so that will do it for us today. As I, I mentioned, Nick will be back tomorrow morning to do it, and then we will hopefully both be back Wednesday night as well. So everybody have a great night. We'll see you guys again tomorrow morning.